Well, when I was starting out as a library student in Madison, Wisconsin, back in the 1990s, there was no manual for this profession. There was no courses on data librarianship or data support or data curation. And so everyone was learning on the job. And given that it's quite a modern sounding field, data librarianship, it was, it was almost like an oral tradition. Uh, when I started out, I sat down in front of the main train, mainframe terminal with my boss, and she literally showed me what to do on the screen. And of course, we all learned from each other at the iAssist conferences, which were once a year, and people were just um, coming together and sharing their knowledge and really soaking that up. But that's quite an oral tradition, so I thought it would be a really good idea when when Bassett started talking to me about the book, to to have a handbook, to have a manual for new people in the field so that they don't have to reinvent the wheel, given that some people have been doing this work going back four decades. Well, I thought long and hard about how to get the book written, given that I had to keep doing my day job as well. And so I, at first I thought it, I could share the load by doing an edited volume, get a lot of other experts to contribute chapters. And uh, I got talked out of that idea by talking to a library professor. Marianne Kennan from Australia was visiting at the time, and she said, there are a lot of those edited volumes, but what we could really use as library educator is um, a text with a single voice. Uh, and that she would be inclined to assign that to her students, whereas if it was an edited volume, she might just assign one or two chapters. So that got me thinking that the single book, um, the overall unified book was the way to go. And I still didn't know how I'd get it on, done on top of my day job. So I thought two authors would cut the work in half. And I started thinking about who could help me with that. And thought of my friend John, who I knew from conferences and professional societies, and it seemed whenever we chatted, we saw things eye to eye professionally, and I also knew that he came from a rich background that differed than mine. So it, it turned out true that we, we brought our two experiences together and experiences together and were able to create a unified voice. Well, I had a, a different route to that, uh, described by Robin. Um, I'd worked much more in a kind of archival uh, uh, situation um, and eventually I'd found myself working at a national data um, archive. So I, uh, I was working on a quantitative and qualitative material, um, but archiving, um, like library work, involves a lot of interesting supporting researchers and I think we kind of had common, kind of common ground for that reason. There's often uh, a, a great deal made of a difference, I think, between working the two different uh, s uh, situations. But in fact, differences are disappearing rapidly. And we're all putting a lot of emphasis on working with researchers, on giving uh, support. And I think that's probably why I find myself um, working in academic libraries uh, eventually, first at the London School of Economics uh, and now at Oxford. Um, and a lot of our work is about resource discovery, support, guidance, and basically finding common ground for researchers in working with uh, digital materials. Uh, technology changes quickly, but academia is slow to change. It's steeped in tradition. Um, the behaviors are, are taught uh, going down from one to another. And uh, so as we say in the book, it, Culture change is, is really a, a long game. Um, there's a lot of factors affecting researchers' willingness to work openly, and uh, for example, in data sharing. Uh, so that's really why we try to emphasize working in partnership with researchers, uh, because we're all learning at the same time. They're, they're learning new open culture sharing and uh, curating, the importance of curating data. At the same time, we're picking up the skills on how to support them in doing that.
And it's, it's interesting, that's one of the things we were often said when we were writing it, should we, is this chapter finished, so-and-so is happening, or there's such a conference coming up next month, should we include it? But ultimately, as Robin was saying, some, some parts of it will kind of go out of date. But one of the reasons we stressed practical issues in the book, I think, is to kind of try and keep it relevant and try to improve its kind of relevance now and for the future. And that's one of the reasons we, we uh, decided right on early on that we'd call it a handbook as well to kind of stress that something can be kept and used uh, and can continue to be relevant.